the show that teaches you how to get more and better results, both personally and professionally. I'm your host, Jean Elster, the Results Queen. Today we have Roseanne de Torres. Say hi, Roseanne. Hey, Jean. Hey, Roseanne. I'm so excited to have you on our television show because I know that you are not only an amazing attorney, but you're also a published author, not once, because here's your first book, Breakthrough Results, but twice. Here's your own book, Divorce. It's very, you know. <laughs> so with that said, um, I want to welcome Roseanne de Torres to our show. Roseanne, tell us a little about yourself and what you want to talk about today. I'm an, I'm an attorney and uh, I, um, I've got 28 years of practicing law, uh, doing estate planning and mostly family law. Uh, we are the attorneys that other attorneys turn to when they can't get the results for their clients that they, that they want to achieve. Uh, we settle 99% of our cases through uh, without, without going to court. And um, that, that amounts to thousands of cases over the course of my career. And um, I wrote that book to help people uh, thinking about divorce. Yes, that one. Thinking about divorce, uh, work through the process of uh, what's at stake, how to prepare, uh, how to adjust to the new realities that they face. And um, I'm real happy to talk to you today. That's very exciting. Okay, so 99% is a very, very high percentage. How do you make sure that only 1% gets to court and the 99% settle? How do you do that? So we bring to bear all this experience in examining um, issues. So when you, when people come to us and say, you know, I have this situation, this dilemma, this, this case that can't be settled, this thorny divorce, intractable person, partner, spouse on the other side, impossible lawyer on the other side. We have these assets. We can't figure out how to divide them up. Maybe there's a business involved. Maybe there's a support issue because we have all of this experience. We draw on all those creative juices to impact the solution. We're very solution oriented. And I just seem to have a talent at taking a thorny mess and unraveling it and, and, and helping people figure out a, sort of an out of the box way of thinking about things. So, you know, we often get cases in the middle of them where people have been in litigation for months and months, maybe even years. Other people haven't been able to get resolution. And then within a few months, we're able to settle them. We just take the, the whole pot, we distill it down, and we say, you know, what do you really want? We do have a knack for talking to people the right way, meaning, you know, people want closure, you know, and there's very few people that engage in the divorce process that decide, I want to go, I want to be in divorce for three years. You know, they, they, they want to get done, you know, they want to be over it. And so we always give them a menu of options and we say, look, if you really want this position, which I think you can achieve, you have to be willing to try the case and bring it to a judge. Now that has a cost associated with it. It's financial cost and there's an emotional cost. And you decide, it's not up to me. So because we're able to do that with, the, with our clients, we are really able to achieve a lot of settlements because people just, look, it's a, it's a, it's a lose-lose proposition divorce. It's not win-win. Nobody's dancing a jig at the end of the case. People, uh, the best settlements are those that, um, both parties are equally unhappy about, right? So most people are willing to gain closure and sacrifice something that they're probably even entitled to because it's just they need to move on with their lives. And when you talk to people like that and you explain to them what the consequences of holding a particular position are, they see it and they say, you know what, I'd rather, I know I'm entitled to that, but I'd rather just get out of this marriage and capitulate a little bit. That doesn't mean that they go away from the marriage without what they're really entitled to, but they may have compromised here or there to just get the closure that they want. So that's how we do it. It's pretty amazing, actually. We also, you know, we're also trained mediators and collaborative professionals. So we've all, I've had all this extra training in solving disputes without, you know, without going to court. That's impressive, actually. Yeah. That you said you have this knack of looking through thorny, thorny uh, situations and how you think outside the box. Is there like a process to that that you that you do, or it just happens? 
Well, yeah, I mean, in a, you know, broadly speaking, so somebody will come, and, and it can be somebody that's in the midst of a divorce that we, you know, we take over a case for somebody, or they come to us from the beginning. So we take all the data, we take, we do a, a thorough interview with, with the people, we find out what their goals and objectives are, we, we ask them to imagine and dream a little, what do you want your life to look like? Now, I can't give everybody their dream, you know, but I want to know what, what is it that they want so that I can, if I can, create a, a solution that, that achieves that for them. So when we talk, talk to them about what their goals are, what their dreams are, what they want their life to look like, and then we look at the realities. We look at their assets, their income. We look at tax returns. We get, collect all kinds of financial information from them. We do, we do a thorough investigation of their children, what their children's needs are, the children have special needs, maybe the parent has a special need. We, you know, whatever those facts are, we, we pull them all together. And then we, we're able to um, look at them and say, if you ask me, this is where I think we can take your situation. And, and a lot of times there's options, you know, the, it's not always, you've got to do it this way. Um, you, there's often ways to trade things, you know, maybe you want the house, you're willing to give up a little retirement money to get it. Maybe you, um, you really need more alimony and you're willing to give up a little child support. Uh, maybe you want more alimony in the near term, but you're willing to limit the term of alimony, you know, so there's a lot of different ways that we can be creative about solving problems. Um, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, how we do it. Um, and a lot of it has to do with managing expectations and just, you know, understanding what's at stake and um, what, you know, what we can achieve. When you've been around as long as I have, you kind of know, you know, when a client says, oh, I want A, B, C, you, you could just say, you, you know, that's not realistic. Um, or they could say, I'd really like, you know, PDQ. And you say, you know, that's within the realm of possibility. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's what we do. That's how we do it. And one of the things you said is that the lawyers, let other lawyers come to you. What do you mean by that? How do you get to be like a lawyer's lawyer? Yeah, so we've actually been, we've taken over cases from lawyers who have said to their clients, I can't help you anymore. Go see DeTorres and DeGeorge. Um, we've received, we've, I can't even count the number of times I've, gotten involved in cases from that other lawyers have bowed out of because they just can't get it done. Um, so we do have a reputation for handling the complicated ones, the ones that nobody wants to get involved in. Look, in 2008, when the economy, you know, during the election season, there was a lot of uncertainty about the future uh, of every American citizen. So work really fell off. There were a lot of lawyers that did other types of law that all of a sudden became divorce attorneys because they needed, they needed to eat. And I get it. But if you don't have the skill, it's not something, once you get to a, a certain threshold, it's not, it's not a easy to, to get the case over with and get the case done. And so over time, that's become apparent. And people, you know, that, you, you know, lawyers that don't have divorce as their specialty, divorce or family law, they get involved in these cases and it becomes clear after a certain time that they really don't have the experience and the skill set to finish it. So that's what happens. And then they just, you know, so we're nice to all our colleagues and they say, hey, you know, call the Taurus and the George. They'll, they'll help you finish it. I can't tell you how many times that happens. So then what made you write this book? Kind of honest, but, you, know. That's, you made me write that book. No. <laughs> so what made me write that book? So um, I had a a lot of um, I had a lot to say, you know, and I wanted a forum in which to say it. I felt like I had something to add. I had I could add value to people's lives. You know, I'm. I'm happily married, so I'm, but I've been divorced, so I know what that feels like. I know I've had that experience. I, I had, you know, problems with custody and parenting. I had problems fighting about financial issues. So I know what that feels like, and I, I think that there, we, we offer a saner, uh, more rational way to do it. 
and I wanted to give that to people. So I went through my 28 years of writing blogs and newsletters and articles and social media posts, and I just took all that information together, all my checklists that I had created through the years, all the, the things that we would write to our clients to tell them about how to prepare, and I just consolidated it in this book to, to be like a primer for somebody that might be thinking about getting divorced, you know? And it's really readable. It's meant for a consumer or somebody that doesn't know anything about the law. It's real easy to read and very practical. I would agree with that because I, I did read it. And with that said, what, what do you think are the top three things that you would recommend from this book? The top three things uh, that I would recommend from that book for somebody thinking about the divorce is number one, be prepared. Um, prepare yourself, and the book goes into great detail about the ways that you can prepare yourself. You, sh you should prepare yourself emotionally for the process. You should prepare yourself financially for the process. And you should prepare yourself uh, with a, the proper support team. And that means not just the right lawyer, but also who outside in your personal life is going to support you? Is it your family? Is it a therapist? Is it a, a, you know, a spiritual advisor or something like that? So be prepared is the, is the first thing. The second thing is make sure that you get a specialist. If you have anything else at stake in your marriage, and, and I, what do I mean by that? Anything like a house, children, a retirement account, um, you don't want to hire somebody that's not an expert. And the way that you can know in New Jersey uh, whether you have an expert is they're certified by the New Jersey Supreme Court as a matrimonial law attorney. And you can tell that they are because they'll say they are on all their marketing pieces and things like that. Their website will let you know that. You can ask them or you can go on the New Jersey Supreme Court website and find a list of all the certified attorneys. Every state in the country has specialty certifications for divorce and family law. So if you're not in New Jersey and you're reading my book, any state will also have that specialty certification that you can assure yourself, I'm getting an attorney that knows what they're doing. Because to get that designation, you have to go through a lot of, a lot of stuff to get it. You have to take a test. You have to be vetted by judges and other lawyers that you've had cases against. They actually have to recommend you for that distinction. Yeah, judges and other lawyers. And, other lawyers. and we also have to take twice as many certification or um, continuing education classes as any other lawyer would have to. So we, we are constantly boning up on new developments in the law. And then the third thing I would say the biggest takeaway is, is um, learn how to compromise. The, the, the process of divorce is lose-lose. Is There's uh, no, Nobody wins in divorce. There's no, um, no happiness in it. Um, it. Some people come to the process mutually agreeable that this is what needs to happen, but it is a sad occasion no matter what. Whether you're amicable or not, it's the death of a marriage. There may be children that impacted by it, and it's a sad occasion. You know, I'm sure that when you walk down the aisle or however you married, when you were in the process of marrying, you didn't expect that one day you would be in this position. So there is always some sort of disappointment associated with the process. So if you can let go of some of the emotionality of the, of, of the loss, it will help you to make more rational and reasonable decisions about how to solve the problems of who gets what and how we're going to carve up the time with the children. So be prepared, get an expert on your side, and learn how to compromise. Those are the three big takeaways. You also talked about it was important to have a support team around you. Yes. You know, as women, sometimes we think we just have to go it alone. What kind of support team? I mean, you mentioned a couple of people, but how do we really figure that out? So, I mean, for every, for every person, that's different. And a support system can take the form of, you know, your best friend, a therapist, we highly recommend that if you're struggling with the sadness of divorce or if you're in a high conflict relationship, that you get yourself into some form of treatment. If the children are being impacted negatively, they should also be in treatment. But therapy is great. Uh, friends, join a club, 
get yourself back to the gym. If you don't like the gym and you like to hike, join a cl hiking club, a reading club. Get involved in something outside of your life. Even if you have a lot of children or a lot of commitments with children, do yourself a favor and get some time to yourself where you can love yourself, you know, affirm who you are, you know, whether that's, you know, for me, it's, I go to the gym, I walk, I walk my dog. Um, and, and it can be a spiritual thing. You know, if you, if you're left the church and you want to go, you know, maybe going back to the church, joining a Bible study, if that's your thing. Um, but somehow creating a network of support around you because you're going to, most divorces, the experience, once it starts, it gets worse before it gets better. It's just how it is. You know, there's a death of a relationship. And if you have a long-term marriage or kids or there's any kind of conflict, it can be very difficult and trying emotionally. So it helps if you have those so so it helps if you have that support system around you. And those are just some suggestions about how to do that. We have a meetup group too, by the way. We we, we meet up once a month. Yes, our firm sponsors a meetup group, and we walk two miles. We go one one since you know we, we meet in Somerset County at Duke Island Park. Uh, our next meetup is on October fifteenth. It's a Saturday at nine o'clock, and we walk around a paved loop. And we just you know whoever wants to come. And there's no pressure. It's not about you, we want to be your divorce lawyer. It's about getting together with people that are struggling with the same things in the company of people who know what you're going through. And then we go out for brunch after. We've done it in Morris County, and we've done it in Hunterdon County as well. We do it once a month through October. This will probably be our last time for the winter, and then we'll pick it up again in April. Is that something that we could find out from your website if we go to see what you can You can go on Meetup okay. uh, and go to Moving Forward, Walk, and Brunch. That's our, that's our Meetup. But it, it is, I don't think it's on the website. It should be on the website, though, right? <laughs> Yeah. that I want to ask you about is because you know you said we needed to be prepared but a lot of times as women we don't necessarily are the ones who are, are initiating the divorce sometimes we're on the receiving end so right what happens when we're on the receiving end and what does that mean to get prepared so the you know whether you're on the receiving end or not it doesn't matter from a legal standpoint if you're divorcing somebody or you're being divorced uh, it matters it can matter emotionally because some you know you're the lever or you're being left behind and that can often have an impact on how people react you know I always like to find out in the initial meetings is this something that you you've decided and then and your spouse is not on the same page or are you both on the same page why do I want to know that because if you're leaving, if you're doing the leaving, I want to know if your spouse is caught up to you because for you to be in my office talking to me about the process of divorce, you've done a lot of emotional work to get there. Has your spouse done the same amount of work? If they haven't, then that may play into the dynamics of how this process goes. I don't want to hit them with a sledgehammer. I don't want to send them a nasty letter. I don't want to polarize them. I want them to come to the table agreeable, amenable, and accepting. So maybe we need to give them some time to catch up to you. So that's first. But then, then being prepared means collecting stuff. It means uh, paperwork. And we have, the book has a bunch of checklists about what you can, what you need to try to collect uh, and, and how many years of documents and statements and thank, you know, tax returns and things like that, that we would like to see, if at all possible, to help you strategize a solution. Now, all that being said, if you can't get this stuff, don't worry about it, we'll get it. You know, Because a lot of people don't have access to it, they don't know what to look for, maybe they're in a, an abusive relationship and they just can't get it, don't worry about it. We will figure it out, We believe me, we often have cases where our clients just simply can't get their hands on data. We will get that. We will get it for them. But if you can, it certainly makes our job a lot easier. So it's basically collecting documents and paperwork. That's how you be, become prepared beyond establishing the support network. Interesting. And you talked about abusive relationships. Is that like a special situation, or how does that work? Well, we um, when I first came to Hunterdon County in 1994, I had a little baby. She was three years old. And I didn't have a job. And I was introduced to the executive director of the domestic violence agency in Hunterdon County 
a woman by the name of Nancy Connor, and they did not have a legal advocate on staff. Now, I didn't take a job with them, but what they did was whenever there was a victim of domestic violence, they needed a lawyer to go to court with these victims. And the state of New Jersey would pay me a stipend of $400 per case anytime I went to court with the victim. And whether it was five minutes in court or five days in court, I got $400. And so I did literally dozens of these cases. And that's how I started um, becoming known for representing victims of domestic violence. And so we've made a name for ourselves doing that because of our experience. So domestic violence is, it's usually a cycle. So meaning there's, there's some sort of violence and it can be, it doesn't have to be a physical assault. It can be bullying, financial uh, isolation, isolating from your family, isolating you from your family or friends, refusing to let you use the phone, not letting you leave the room, following you around, bullying you on the cyberbullying. It could be um, not allowing you to have access to money or credit cards, but it can also be violence, you know, what you would think of as violence. But domestic violence encompasses a broader array of behaviors that a lot of people don't think, well, they never hit me, so it's not violent. And I'm, and I'm like, no, it, it still is. Uh, constant texting and calling, name calling, all of that can come under the umbrella of domestic violence. So we always ask, you know, if there's any violence in the home, is there any kind of behavior in the home that's causing people concern? We want to know about that. That really colors how we proceed. Because if people aren't safe, if, if, if for example, and it's, it's, not, it's not just women who are victims. We've had plenty of men who are victims of domestic violence, and they feel even more victimized because when their wife strikes them, they, nobody listens to them because they, they look at this big guy and they see this petite woman, for example, I've had that case, and they say, oh, come on, you know, he, you know she, she couldn't hurt you. But, but he, she's striking him and he can't do anything because when the police show up, who are they going to look at? They're going to look at him. So we don't know. Hold on, that's my coworker barking. Thanks so much, coworker. Okay, go ahead. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> so what we, you know, so we want to know up front if there is a, any kind of violence in the home of any kind because it will impact how we proceed. For example, if if you're the victim of domestic violence, I'm not going to send mail to you at your house. I, I I wouldn't because I can't be sure that you're going to get the mail and or that you know your spouse isn't going to read the mail. So we we will set up systems. You know, we'll we'll train you how to get a private email, how to use it, how to keep yourself safe in the home, how to have an emergency plan, how to check for surveillance devices. You know, that's a big thing these days. You know, trackers on your phone, trackers on your car, trackers on your laptop, They, you know, keystroke identification devices that can actually track what you're typing on your, you know, your private computer. There's ways, yeah, so we, we, I mean, we don't do that kind of discovery, but we can put you in contact with the people that can help you figure out if that's happening. Um, so it does, it does play, play a role. We just actually got retained in a case today for a domestic violence uh, representing a victim. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, it's pervasive, and it, it cuts across all social, economic, uh, you know, layers. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, white or black, Hispanic, it, it, elderly, young couples. It, it's it, you'd be surprised, and uh, it's and the 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 domestic violence that is invisible, the the harassment, the bullying, the ones that where there's no obvious scars is the most insidious and the most difficult to address. So. So. Because you know, we're, we're broadcasting on uh, the Women's Broadcast Television Network channel, from a woman's point of view, if I am a domestic um, a, a, a victim, a victim, yeah, and I want to get a divorce, what's some steps that I should do? Because I'm sure I'm nervous. Yeah, so we want to be extra careful with you. Um, 
It's not easy. Uh, I would suggest, number one, learning about the process of domestic violence. And every county in New Jersey has an agency that will give you treatment and education for free. Uh, and it's anonymous, so nobody knows you're there. They will also teach you about where you can go if you have to leave your home in a hurry. Even if you have children, there's safe houses and shelters that you can quickly relocate to. They'll help you develop what I call the safety plan so that if you do pull the trigger on the divorce and you decide to divorce, you, you do it in a way when you know you can be safe and your children can be safe. So we had a case recently with a woman that was in an abusive relationship and we set it up so that we filed for divorce after she left the home and she just basically one day, he went to work and while he was at work, uh, a moving truck came, took what she wanted, which wasn't much, and, and moved out of state to stay safe. And then that day we filed for the divorce. Now, she had since, you know, she, she had, in the meantime, she had gotten a new cell phone and she abandoned the old one so he couldn't get in touch with her. He didn't know where she went. So she was completely safe. And now the process of divorce is progressing, but she's in a totally safe environment. So there's things that we can do. It depends on the circumstances, but it is difficult. I'm not going to, I don't want to sound like that's, you know, easy peasy. It, it, it isn't. They can be very troublesome. And, but we have such a broad range of skill in that area that we, we will devise a strategy that can work for almost anyone. Um, but it takes, it takes some thought, you know. I'm glad that you gave that advice. So I know we're almost out of time, but I know there's some people who probably want to order this fabulous book you can do that you can order my book on amazon.com really uh-huh yeah and, yes and if i wanted to get in touch with you because i want to talk to you about divorce how do i do that so you can go to our our website which is d and d family law.com or you can call us uh at our number is 908-284-6005 okay just say it one more time so people got it because i'm sure they didn't write it down fast enough uh, the website is dndfamilylaw.com, and our phone is 908-284-6005. So, Roseanne, do you have any last words of advice, given that you've absolutely given an amazing amount of information over the last half hour? Any last words? Well, I think my last word is if you want, if you're really considering uh, ending your marriage, uh, move forward with us. We, we have the depth and breadth of experience to help you through that journey, and we genuinely care about what we do. So you, you, your experience with us will be exceptional. You have my word on it. Excellent. Roseanne, thank you so much for taking the time for being on our television show. Um, to get to Ros Roseanne, as you can say, she gave her uh, website and her phone number. And we look forward to seeing you the next time on Get Results Television. Thanks so much. I'm Jean Elser, The Results Clean.